Welcome to King Lear Summary of Act 4. Last we left off, the Duke of Gloucester's eyes, well, I'll just call him Gloucester, got his eyes pulled out, well, technically stricken out. And now with that happening, there's so much more to actually go ahead and say, because Gloucester's eyes are now squished out, and uh, because of that, nothing more else will actually happen. Now, what do I think about that? Well, not much. So this is how I do this. Of course, in Act 4, we finally find out that Edgar, the legitimate son of, well, Gloucester, is actually in the... is actually in a precarious decision. He's still acting as if he's mad, but he's also in the kind of situation where he's uh, a little bit uh, loony, shall we say that? He's not loony, he's just acting loony. Well, the King Lear thinks he's loony as well, too, and he calls him a philosopher. And, of course, he basically said, evil demons are inside my mind, which, of course, King Lear's mad himself. So, this doesn't, this doesn't, this makes sense to him. This actually makes sense to him. Now the now the joke, the joke, the jester is out, the fool, the king's fool is out, and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm not here anymore. And instead of the fool, it's now the Edgar, the mad Edgar, well, oh, poor Tom, technically, goes ahead, it's his turn to actually go ahead and give out his own ideas about the world. He's the one who philosophizes now. And with that philosophy, of course, so much more has actually happened, too. Uh, what else? What else? Next up, we basically have Gloucester being led by our poor little Edgar. Edgar and King Lear are separated because the French army arrived. All right, only hey, Elk. All right, King Lear, we are going to go ahead and solve you like we ever are. But then King Lear is mad, thinking like, demons, uh, runs away, and uh, the poor French army has to go with him. Meanwhile, Edgar runs into Oswald, uh, he kills Oswald, and uh, next thing that happens, Gloucester, he meets Gloucester, uh, Gloucester's eyes are pouring out, and, well, Edgar recognizes him, but Edgar is precarious, he's not going to tell who he is, he also disguises his voice on purpose, and he basically, and Gloucester's like, alright, man, I, I want to be led to the highest cliff, please send me there, and he's like, sure sick, man, and he does it, but then this happens. He leads him to the highest cliff, and womp, 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 he falls, but here's a trick. Edgar didn't lead Gloucester to the highest cliff. He just led him to a, a foot-high cliff. Next thing that happens is that Gloucester falls down, and he's like, oof, why am I not dead? And he's like, wow, you fell. And then he hears a bunch of running down, and then he realizes, oh, wow, you, you, you fell down from so high up. But how did you survive that without any broken bones? And it must be a miracle. God must have wanted to live. Do you want to try again? No. I just began my will to live. And somehow that ha that happens. And next up, Edgar looks at the letter that, that was supposed to be carried by Oswald. But uh, Edgar goes ahead and realizes that Cordelia's army has been captured. And he's going to have to save them some one way or another. And that there's not much more I can actually say. That's it. The end for Act 4. We'll see soon what's going to happen. Oh, and Cordelia gets into the singing at least once. Cordelia uh, just weeps over her father's letter on the condition of her father. That's it. So that's Act 4. I hope to see you guys soon. Until next time, shout out, please. Bye-bye!